Okay, starting with just vo vocabulary, polyhedron is a three-dimensional solid with many polygonal faces. An example would be like a rectangular prism um, where it, all the sides are polygons. Polygons have straight sides in their closed figures, so this would be a polyhedron. Something that wouldn't be a polyhedron would be like a cylinder. Um, circles aren't um, polygons, so therefore a cylin cylinder is not a polyhedron. Um, breaking up the words for polyhedron, poly in Greek means many and hedron means surfaces and that's how they came up with the word. Um, a couple things here, prisms, I'm sure you recognize that word. A prism is something that looks like this. It has two identical bases, so here's an example right here. The base is the top and the bottom. These are identical and congruent, so if you know the measurements of one of them, you have the exact same measurements and area of the top one. We're going to name these. You name them based on their bases. Sometimes you'll see it like this where the base is actually on the bottom, um, but sometimes it's sideways. In this case, the base is a, the triangle even though it's sideways. So here the base is a hexagon and a pentagon, and then we'll call this a rectangular prism, um, but it could also be a cube it looks like. So here we're going to write this is a triangular prism. Um, here is a rectangular prism. We'll also say, or a cube, it looks like a cube to get. If it was a cube, it would have squares and all the squares would be the same all the way around. This um, is a hexagonal prism because of that hexagon there. Do what you can. And pentagonal prism. So again, with the prism, you have the bases, which are some shape, in this case a pentagon, and then the sides are rectangles. Okay, moving down to the bottom part. Now we have a pyramid like the Egyptian pyramids. Um, we have a base, which is the bottom, and the vertex is that top point. Pyramids are named by the shape of the base. So here there's a hexagon on the base, so this would be a hexagonal pyramid. This one has a rectangular base, so rectangular pyramid. This is a pentagon on the base, so pentagonal pyramid. And then here a triangular base is triangular pyramid. Another popular one, popular one is a square pyramid where it has a square base. Okay, now flipping it over to the other side. Okay, other solids. Um, first we have a cylinder. A cylinder has two bases that are circles. Bases are two parallel congruent circles. And the side around it is a smooth surface. It's actually a rectangle that goes around that. As far as a cone goes, we have a base, which is a circle, and the top vertex there, and we'll kind of scribble this out. Miss, can you like, I can't see, I'm going to move to this Okay, one. that's fine. And then a sphere. Sphere right here. Um, by definition, a sphere is a set of points that are the same distance from a given point called the center. Do you need a piece of paper, Sky? No. Are you, sure? you might want to write down the equations when we get there. Okay, moving down. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, okay, sorry. Bobby.
Okay. Um, I told you that we were covering surface area and volume today, and both concepts were just too much when I tried it out with my first period. I, with my honors class, I did both, but it was still a lot even for them. So for today, I'm just going to stick to volume, and we'll just stick to volume for now, and then I'll introduce surface area at a later time. So we're just going to stick to volume. So you'll see us kind of skipping over the surface area stuff. So to find a vo the volume of a prism, you find the area of the base and multiply by the height. So the equation for volume of a prism would be volume equals area of the base times the height. And that's what the equation looks like. So essentially, we're going to find the area of the base, which is a rectangle, then multiply by the height, and that'll give us how many cubes are in this rectangular prism. To give you a better visual, breaking out the candy bin. Um, have you ever done one of those things where you like guess how many candies are in the container? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's a, that kind of idea. We're finding out how many candies are in the container. Um, if we were to take our best guess, you could either guess or you could do some simple calculations and try to figure out based on the volume equation. If you wanted to, you could count all the candies on the bottom, then count how many layers there are of candy, multiply those two numbers, and you'd get about the number of candies in this container. That makes sense? So if you counted all the candies on the bottom, counted the number of layers, multiplied the two, you'd get the volume. Or you could shortcut that even more and count the number of Jolly Ranchers that go this way, multiply it by the number of Jolly Ranchers that go this way to find the area of the base, and then multiply it by the height or the number of layers, and you find the volume, how many candies are in there. That's what we're doing with volume, but instead of candy, it's actually little cubes that um, fill up the space perfectly. So, when we find the volume of a rectangular prism, it says that we have this capital V, which is area of the base. In this case, we have a square. And we'll say the dimensions are four by four by four. The area of the base or the square would be four times four. And then the height of the prism is four. So we get 16 times four, volume equals 64 units cubed. For the next one, the numbers that I used in my other classes were 4, 6, and 3. So 4, 6, and 3. So label those dimensions there. So to find the volume of this, we need the area of the base, that bottom rectangle. So volume equals 4 times 6 for the area of the bottom rectangle times the height. And the volume comes out to 72 units cubed. Next, putting the dimensions, this is a triangular pier prism. So this would be five, four, and we'll put three right here. We'll assume this is a right triangle. Okay, to find the volume of this, we need to find the area of the base and times it by the height. This is kind of sideways here. The base is the triangle, and then we'll find the area of the triangle and then multiply by the height, which is three. To find the area of a triangle, it was one half base times height of the triangle times the height of the prism. And that'll give us the volume of that prism. So then plugging in my numbers, one half, the base and height of the triangle would be four and five, and the height is three. It is 30, yeah. So you can multiply these numbers in any order. You can do half of four is two, two times five times three, 10 times three is 30, 30 units cubed.
Any questions? So the equation that was used that is used for all prisms and a cylinder as well is area of the base times the height. This changes though based on the shape of the base. So when it was a square, we just did four times four. When it was a rectangle, it was four times six. When the base was a triangle, we had to plug in the equation for area of a triangle. Okay, next, cylinder. Um, again, we're just focusing on volume. The volume of a cylinder, you find the area of the base and multiply by the height. I'm gonna plug in some dimensions for this cylinder. Let's say this is three, we'll call the height 10. Okay, so the base is what shape? Circle. It's a circle. Does anybody remember the equation for area of a circle? And area equals pi times r squared. Pi r squared. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of our base is then going to be this equation. So volume equals pi r squared times the height, which is 10. Are we still using 3.14? I'm going to show you two different ways. Okay, so first step would be to plug in the numbers. Three squared is nine, and we get 90 pi. Sometimes, and this happens on Khan Academy a lot, and it also has, happens on standardized testing, they ask for the answer in terms of pi. What that means is they don't want you to multiply this by pi, they just want you to leave it like this, and then you could say this is units cubed, and that's your volume. This works well because it's an exact answer, or if they have you typing a number into a box, um, it's easy to type that in. But if they don't want the answer in terms of pi, then the last step would just be to multiply by 3.14 or use the pi button in your calculator. So we're going to do 90 pi equals 282.74. So these are both correct. This is just in terms of pi. For this one, we multiplied by pi to get that answer. Okay, next we're going to do volume of a pyramid. Volume of a pyramid is volume equals one third area of the base times the height. With a cylinder, we could find the area of the base, multiply by the height, and that would take up all that space. But with a pyramid, if you were to find the area of the base and multiply by the height, it would include all of this space, which isn't really part of the pyramid. So the pyramid's actually a third of that space. Don't they know I'm trying to teach? Okay, anyways, dimensions of this, oh, what did I put in my other classes? I'm gonna grab the numbers from my last class. Okay, dimensions of this, let's put five, five, and then the height will be six. Okay. So area of the base, we got a square here, so we're gonna find the area of that square. Volume equals one third. Five times five is the area of the square, and then the height of the thing is six. You can multiply these in any order. Um, multiplying by a third is the same as dividing by three. So if I do 25 times six, I get 150 um, times one third, or 150 divided by three is just gonna be 50 units cubed. There's no pi there because we aren't working with circles.
Okay, next. Volume of a cone. Yeah, we only got two more. Is that just pi times two times one third? Like pi squared times one third? Good job, yep. Okay, so volume of a cone is one third area of the base times the height. The base is a circle, so this is gonna be pi r squared. The dimensions for the cone, let's put in three, and the height of the cone, we'll say is five. Okay, so plugging the numbers in, the base is pi r squared, so pi, radius is three squared, and the height is five. And then from here, using order of operations, three squared would be nine, so I get nine pi. You can multiply these in any order. A third of nine, I can do that in my head, that's just gonna be three pi times five is 15 pi units cubed. That's in terms of pi with a calculator, 15 pi equals 47.12 units cubed. Last but not least, volume of a sphere. Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. It's actually the simplest of the equations. Let's say the radius is 4. Volume equals 4 thirds pi 4 cubed. Using order of operations, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Bring everything down. In the calculator, you would do four divided by three. You do times pi. Wait, that didn't work. Times 64 equals 268.08 units cubed. And you're done. Okay, so when you get on to Schoology for your homework, how many? 19 minutes. Okay, when you get on to Schoology for your homework, you'll only see volume problems. I took all the surface areas off. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Something that actually, something that happens on the computer that didn't happen in the notes is sometimes you'll have a cylinder, and instead of them giving you just radius, they'll give you diameter. So let's say they say that that's 14. If it has that line drawn all the way across, that means 14 is the diameter. You just have to divide that by two to get the radius, which is like halfway. So just keep that in mind. If it has that line all the way across, you do have to divide it by two to get the radius for the equations. And that's all. Um, I'm gonna have you use your phones for your homework, but I do wanna see everybody on it working on your homework. If you wanna use your computer, that's fine. Yes. Bathroom, yes, you can, sorry. Thank you for waiting.